This week on Channel 8 News, we have an exclusive interview of Kent Porterfield, we look at the new football recruits, we talk the Bearcats and Blazers, and more. Your Channel 8 News starts right now. Thanks for tuning in to Channel 8 News, the show where we provide the latest news and sports coverage on the Northwest Missouri State University campus and in the Maryville community. I'm Kirsten Stokes. And I'm Alexis Kuhner. Before we get into this week's stories, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for all the latest news and updates. Last time on Channel 8 News, Dr. Kent Porterfield, one of the university's four presidential candidates, presented the first open forum on the Northwest campus. This week, I spoke with Porterfield in an exclusive interview in which he addressed the need to increase Northwest enrollment rates. Here's that clip from the interview. What will always come first is, um, you know, educating students and trying to create some futures, you know, building futures. So, but when you look at, in, at the enrollment picture in the region, you can see that traditional age college students, those numbers are gonna go down. So that means that you gotta, if you're gonna continue to maintain your place, you've got to really add value. You've got to be known as an institution that is affordable, that focuses on um, equity and opportunity for all students. Uh, and that you can accommodate those students and help them be successful, that coming there is perhaps not a guarantee, but a pretty close to a guarantee that you're going to graduate and that you're going to be ready for your career or ready for graduate school or whatever comes next for you. So continuing to evolve programs, right? Continuing to push innovation, be relevant in fields, think in interdisciplinary ways, those things are all really important. But it's also really important to meet students where they are, and I mean all students. So that means that there are going to be a need to continue to pursue new markets, um, more adult students, more transfer students, maybe more veterans. Um, certainly, the po student population needs to be uh, more diverse and will be more diverse over mm -hmm. time in every way, certainly yeah. racially and ethnically, but it will be more diverse in every way. And so, you know, that means that um, the institutions have to adapt right, to new circumstances. And um, if you're doing really well with student retention, then you've got to figure out how to be more focused on where are the places where, um, where we aren't doing quite as well as mm -hmm. we want to. So um, I call it more targeted, right, more focused. Yeah. on where, where, Who are our students that are most at risk and what are we doing specifically for those students right. is a really critical question. I also asked Porterfield questions regarding his routes to Northwest and the Maryville area, short and long-term goals, and more. For the full interview, click on the link in the description below or find it on our YouTube page at KNWT TV. Also with this, two more candidate forums were held on campus last week. Dr. David P. Jones and Dr. Michael Goddard visited Northwest and spoke on their policies as university president. We'll have more exclusive interviews with those candidates at a later date. The last finalist, Dr. Lance Tatum, will speak at 2 p.m. this Thursday, February 16th at the Hughes Field House in room 212. For more information, click on the link in the description below. You can also watch Channel 8 News every week at 9 a.m. on Mondays for more updates. When we return, we'll be kicking it over to Bearcat Update with Skylar Stamps. He'll look at the new Northwest football recruits, the Cats and Blazers, and more. You're watching Channel 8 News on KNWT. Hey you, you're finally awake. Welcome to Gen 2. Your place for all things gaming and ready tech related. On this show we play a variety of games. From sports, <laughs> to horror, to everything in between. <sighs> Sound interesting? Make sure to come join us every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Welcome back to Bearcat Update, the show for all things Bearcat sports. I'm your host, Skylar Stamps. The Northwest football team announced over 30 new recruits for the upcoming football season, including Maryville native Cooper Lowe. Riley Westfall has the story. 
On February 1, 2023, head football coach Rich Wright announced the names of the 32 recruits joining the team this upcoming season. The list introduced signees from several different states, including 12 from Missouri, 5 from Kansas, 5 from Nebraska, 4 from Iowa, 1 from Arkansas, and 1 from Florida. I was able to speak with Cooper Lowe, future Bearcat linebacker, about the new recruits and the 2023 football season. Uh, yeah, it's definitely different going into a team where there's already kind of a family. Um, I think you're going to get that with almost every team that you join. Um, I think that going in, you just have to obviously respect the older guys and you'll slowly get a, you'll slowly get uh, used to everyone there. Um, and I just think that also everyone's kind of like, don't you already know all those guys living in this town? And it's just like, it's completely different. Like Northwest is its own town inside of Maryville, in my opinion. Like I think that like, I don't know many guys that play here. I think it's kind of, it's a lot different than people imagine that it is. So I think it'll be, It'll be cool um, going in and meeting a bunch of new guys. All the new recruits, everyone's going to adapt to kind of what they already have. Um, I think that everyone um, living all over is going to kind of have their own way of communication and just kind of their own lingo. So I think that everyone's going to adapt to kind of what's already established here. I think that like you hear about all these recruits that come in that have they have they have offers from different and some sometimes bigger D1 schools. And I just think it's. It's kind of cool that a lot of those guys, they, they choose Northwest over them and everyone kind of wonders why would they not want to go D1, they're going to be, if they have a full ride and whatnot. And I actually think it's kind of cool that they come here because they think that every, they know everyone here at campus, it's a smaller campus and they do it, they have a great football team. So I think that's kind of cool seeing some of those bigger guys, they choose Northwest over some of those bigger schools just because they like it better here and it feels more like home. Lowe is the only recruit this season coming from right here in Maryville and is currently attending Maryville High School where he earned All-State honors on both offense and defense for the Spoof Hounds during his senior football season. Thanks, Riley. The signing list includes 29 high school students and three transfer students. From the field to the court, basketball season is ramping up with the postseason just around the corner. This past week, the Bearcat men's and women's teams picked up two big road wins over Rogers State and Northeastern State. Be sure to catch the Bearcats back inside Bearcat Arena on February 23rd versus Central Oklahoma. One group of students has been making some noise and a mark in the Northwest community. We have a live interview with the Bearcats and Blazers. Here's Tristan Clark with the interview. Thanks, Skylar. I'm Tristan Clark here with Channel 8 News. I'm sitting here with the Bearcats and Blazers. You all have raised many questions of the Bearcat community. How did the Cats and Blazers get started and do you guys expect to get so popular so quick? Well, it all started about, uh, was it two years ago? About two years ago. ago. Yep, Jackson and I went to Walmart. We were walking through and of course we go to the Bearcat, like apparel section. We see the Blazers, we look at each other, start laughing and we're like, yeah, we're getting some. So we go to our first football game, it was our back uh, 20, 21 season football. We're standing in the front row and we get on the Jumbotron and we laugh. And we're like, okay, we're just gonna keep trying this over and over again. So we went to one more game, did it again, got on the Jumbotron countless times. And then at the start of this football season, a couple of our roommates joined in and then we started getting random people to start joining in with. Trey being one of them. <laughs> and it just kinda went crazy from there. Okay, okay. Um, were you guys trying to copy the shirtless Bearcats at all? Honestly, no. We didn't know they were a thing nope. until people came mm -hmm. up to us and they're like, hey, you guys are like the shirtless Bearcats. And we're, we go, who's that? You know, we didn't know. I completely understand that. Like, I didn't know who they were until like yesterday. So. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Do you plan on having, like, passing this down to the younger Bearcats to continue on the legacy? I mean, well, you know, I'm a junior right now. Uh, you know, things happen with me. Uh, I'm involved in other things, including like uh, like Northwest football. So there's gonna be some times where I'm not gonna be around. That I know that though that you know we are gonna be losing some really great guys. You know, off rip after this season and after this year, I'm very confident about the guys and the energy that we have building on from here on, and uh, just the confidence and just like how much how much gain and how much popularity we got through. I think that uh, especially with me, me and Jackson, uh, we're both gonna continue to con just, keep the, just keep the tradition going. That's all it's all about. So what do you guys think it means to be a Bearcat and Blazer? Honestly, it's just a lot of support for all the teams. We go to all their events. Oh yeah. Um, I know some of the football events, the student support was a little bit low, but we try to help, you know, bring up the energy in the stadiums and in the 
on the court. Oh yeah. Get the players hype. Mm-hmm. Like even the athletes in like sports that like we haven't even been in, able to attend yet, such as track, like they're sliding into our DMs or our account, like here, yeah. post like our schedule for our meets this weekend. I'm like, oh yeah, 100%. Give yeah. me like the results, I'll post those too. Cause mm-hmm. really the whole thing is just to increase school spirit towards Northwest athletics. I love that. Okay, so how do you feel you're influencing like the younger generation, even just in the Maryville community? Like how do you feel that the Bearcats and Blazers are influencing? I think the easiest way to see that is this year is like a little joke that we wanted to have or just like to get some more people involved is we bought a really small blazer and the mop, the mop boy or girl who sits right in front of us who mops the floor when like somebody falls or like during a timeout of a basketball game, we give them a blazer, we pay them in some form of candy and then like we just cheer like when they're mopping, we go mop, mop, mop and we're just like, applauding them and just like giving high fives whenever they're all done. You make me feel kind of special or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. I've, had, I've had a couple of people who've when we're out at Maryville, there's like a couple townies just come up to me and just say like, hey, we really appreciate that like, you're getting this kid, like these own kids involved. I'm like, that's really the whole goal. Just make it fun. For part of it. So are there any other like, I don't know, sports events that you plan on like going to that you haven't gone to yet? Definitely. I think we're looking to go to some like track and field events uh, mm-hmm. in the next couple of weeks. And then softball. We're definitely looking to go to. And baseball season too. Baseball, softball and it's, baseball. It's going to be real controversial with softball and baseball because if we're around opponents oh, yeah, and we're on, sure. <laughs> yeah. Heckling during baseball season. <laughs> like, it's heckling different. different. <laughs> it's going to be very different. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's going to be crazy. Thank you guys so much for joining. I would love to catch you guys at a game sometime, you know, oh, get yeah. another story oh, yeah, going sure. with you guys, a little collaboration. Yeah, thanks, yes, man. Thank this you This has for been us. Tristan Clark with Channel 8 News. Back to you in the studio. You can find the Cats and Blazers rocking those suits and cheering in the crowds at most Northwest sporting events. Ever wonder who works behind the camera for your favorite Northwest live streams? Cat Vision is the team. Alexis Kuhner reports. From sports to homecoming and other Northwest events, students and teachers alike bring live productions to audiences viewing from home. Cat Vision is a production crew composed of media students who film, direct, and edit live content. Whether they are out in the field behind cameras or in the media truck, live broadcasting is their purpose. I spoke with Adam Bocart and Riley Whittington to learn more about what Cat Vision does. So Cat Vision is Northwest version of a professional broadcast company. Uh, It is staffed by two full-time staffers, myself and Will Murphy, and then everybody else on our crew is students. Uh, These students are paid to to do production at a high level, and it's probably one of the coolest jobs that a student can have on campus. So during the fall, we are uh, primarily responsible for uh, any home football game doing the uh, two broadcasts, uh, the in-stadium shoot for the video board uh, that keeps fans energized, and then the MIAA network hires us to do the, uh, the stream that goes nationwide. And then I guess in uh, spring, our priorities shift. We do a little bit of volleyball, a little bit of basketball. Um, but then once track season hits, that's probably some of the longest broadcasts we get to do. Uh, we usually do three broadcasts per season, but each of those broadcasts can be anywhere from you know, six hours to three days long. Uh, so it, it's a really good opportunity to get students in, learning new positions, getting hands-on with some gear that they maybe don't get to during the school year or during football season, and just teach up those new people for that next season. As a streaming assistant, Riley Winnington produces content for football and controls what viewers see at home. I spoke with her about the various positions she holds for track and field productions. For track, it's a little bit different. We kind of just float around and do whatever needs to be done. So I've spent a lot of time during track season in the truck, either doing switcher, which controls the same thing. It controls what people see at home. And um, I did a little bit of directing today. Cat Vision will be filming the Heart of America conference for track this weekend. For Stories That Matter To You, this has been Alexis Kuhner of Channel 8 News. Multiple members of Cat Vision happen to work with KNWT, including myself. So be sure to support by continuing to watch those live streams. And finally, the Northwest softball team is preparing for their upcoming season. Here's what you can expect this spring. With the warm weather this past week, it could only mean one thing. It's softball season. The Northwest Missouri State softball team has hit the field for the 2023 season. Last year, the Bearcats were under first-year head coach Naomi Tellez. They finished the regular season with an overall record of 15 wins and 36 losses with a highlight win over sixth-ranked Minnesota State. 
Coach Taya has talked on what she wants to see out of her players this season. I mean, I think the biggest thing is just going out and competing. Um, you know, these girls are a fiery group of girls um, who go out and compete every day and just going out and bringing that to the field um, and just really going out and playing the game that we love to play. Coach Taya has also talked about their performance in Minnesota to kick off the season with one win and two losses. Day one, we just had the first game jitters. Um, going from day one to day two was a huge difference for us. Uh, we threw well, we threw better from, as a pitching staff. Um, our bats came alive. We were in that dome for a really long time on Saturday, um, starting at 11 o'clock at night, but they still had a ton of energy. Um, we gave ourselves chances to win, which is awesome. So just finding those clutch hits in the future definitely will bring us those wins. Senior Aubrey Griffith has already improved her statistics from last year batting 500 with three RBIs. She touched on how she's achieved this early season success. I want to start by saying there was a lot of preparation, preparation coming into this season, um, especially from our coaches um, looking back at last season about how difficult that was for us as hitters. Um, and I think that they did a really good job of prepping us in practices. We did a lot of live hitting off of our pitchers. We did a lot of um, cage work. We did a lot of T work. So I think that was really beneficial for all of us as well. Griffith also touched on how the new team dynamic will help out the Bearcats this year. The difference between the power hitters and the speed girls. Um, me being a power hitter, it's especially reassuring um, having those slappers on base or having them before or after me. Uh, moving those runners around. So I think that that dynamic is really something special. The Bearcats will take part in a five-state classic at Emporia State this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday starting against Missouri-St. Louis. That's all the time we have here for Bearcat Update. Be sure to tune in next time to stay connected to all things Bearcat sports. When we come back, we'll look at the new update with campus dining and some high school students making their mark in the business, career, and technical industry. You're watching Channel 8 News on KNWT. Hey guys, I'm Garrett Bevins, one of the hosts on Gen 2. And I am Jonas Pilat, one of the other Gen 2 hosts. Come check us out, we talk all things gaming related. Yes, join us. Glory to our Stutska. Now I shall detain you again. No. Y Welcome back to Channel 8 News. I'm Tristan Clark with your business and community update. If you're a regular at the J.W. Jones Student Union, your favorite restaurants will be getting upgraded or replaced. Northwest recently announced certain campus retail venues will change. Chick-fil-A will add breakfast options, Buffalo Wild Wings will replace Moo Ya, a sandwich shop will replace Einstein Bros Bagels, and the Student Union will add a ghost kitchen. This kitchen allows customers to order meals through a mobile app from restaurants like Mr. Beast Burger and Cadoba. These additions will be in effect starting next fall. There are other changes taking place in regards to campus dining, but we'll bring you the latest news on this story next week. For more information, you can click on the link in the description below. In other news, Northwest hosted the FBLA District Conference last week. Northwest faculty and high school students from around the area participated in the performance events and leadership workshops. Here's Kirsten Stokes with the story. Throughout the region, high schoolers took part in the Future Business Leaders of America Conference, as well as open sessions to gain knowledge about business ethics, social media strategies, and interviewing skills. I spoke with Jill Brown, who serves as Director of Corporate Relations, to understand her passion for expressing gratitude and kindness to students across the nation. So I love to talk most about gratitude, and especially about saying thank you. What I'm hoping that they hear from me is, I use the power of gratitude and it has leveraged so many opportunities and so many connections for me. And it, it wasn't hard, it wasn't anything elaborate, I wasn't going to any great measure. I usually am literally just firing off a thank you text um, and how quickly that can elevate a relationship. Just because as humans sometimes we just forget to take the time to say thank you. As the day progressed, I met some of the current FBLA officers to talk about the qualities of an effective leader and their goals for breakout sessions. As an FBLA officer, I have learned how to be a leader 
and someone who is comfortable speaking in front of others. Previously, before I was a district officer, I really hadn't spoken in front of a crowd as big as I do during opening sessions. I stepped out of my comfort zone and it was a new experience for me that I've learned a lot from. A good FBLA officer is, first of all, kind. They can talk to people one-on-one -on -one and understand people from all different backgrounds, especially at the district level, like not, I'm meeting people from all over the place, it's not just my school. They are able to speak professionally, dress professionally, and have that knowledge to be a professional. For students like Cami Faring, the sessions inspired her to continue FBLA and one day become an officer herself. I want to keep coming to these conferences and get as much involved in FBLA as possible and just go for it. Future business educators at Northwest also had the opportunity to lead informative sessions under the guidance of Crystal Combs, a business education advisor. My students are going to be future business educators. So they're going to be having students coming to this conference, hopefully in their future. So by allowing me to be a part of it, I have a history with working with FBLA, so I know a lot of the advisors. And then I bring my students in to help so that they can get that real world experience. Um, so they're gonna do an exhibit here in just a minute where they're gonna present and get that really neat um, interaction with those high schoolers. Being able to go up in front of a group of students, it just kind of gave me a footstep into, I mean, there's assemblies, there's pep rallies, there's so many different things within the world of education. I mean, just even showing that I will have the ability to step up in front of a room and just be me and explain something and pretty much teach. As one of the largest business career student organizations, higher education and making connections has remained important in FBLA. Officers, faculty, and students hope to continue that mission and expand resources. For the stories that matter to you, I'm Kirsten Stokes with Channel 8 News. That's all for your business and community updates. Back to you. Thanks, Tristan. Well, that's all the time we have for Channel 8 News. Be sure to click on the links below to watch certain sections of our show as well as some upcoming events here at Northwest. We also want to hear from you, so leave a comment below on these stories and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for all the latest news and updates as well as other content on our YouTube page at KNWT-TV. For the stories that matter to you, this has been Channel 8 News. Thanks for watching. Click on those two videos on the right to watch some of our other content as well as our past episodes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and follow us on all our platforms. <laughs>